guys today's going to be the first video in, in what might be a little series um two to three part series i've been working on this job for six seven hours now and i'm still not done and it's partially my fault but um i'm not going to tell you my mistake you're going to have to stumble across it as i did but this is a mini split system on a trailer and it's actually two of them but it's the second one that i spend a lot of time on so stay tuned here it comes mini split system here. Hmm. That don't sound good. That's going to have to stay in until I'm done. Alright, here's one of them. Let's turn that one off for a sec. Sounds like a jet landing. Here's the other, let me see, turned on temp 64. Cool. My last experience with one, with one of these, I couldn't really get to the air handlers. Is that cool? Turn it on. It doesn't give me a room temperature. Just a set temperature. All right, let's look at things outside. All right, here's our condenser. It is not running at all. Although the, that seems like it was running. All right, I'm looking for my best place to get underneath. And hopefully I don't get myself absolutely filthy in the process. Okay, now it's coming on. Let's get this off right here. And on. Um, Check some okay, pressure. Okay, we had a um, wasp nest in here somewhere. It sure came flying out. All right, so we have two circuits, which is what I thought. Looks like it can support three. 
Mm -mm, I'm starting to gear down. All right, we're just checking pressures. I can only check on one side. So basically this is my low side on each of these. Technically they both should be running. Let's say 119 on one of them and 97 on the other. Mm -hmm. That's the difference between 40 and 30 degrees. All right, let me see. The red ones. The blue one is the one that is low, and that's this one. I cannot help but think, oh, this one's dirty too. That the one that's low is the one that's making the noise on the blower. We're still gonna have to crawl underneath and take a look. <laughs> yep. Alright, I guess that was not it. Might as well. All right, we got to find the air handler that's up here. See if we can't get to it. I know it's above this barrier here, so I'm gonna have to cut the barrier just to get to it. seems a little too far to be it that tear and sag up there Boom.
looks like there's water up there. Get some condensation right here. Honestly, I think it's like right about here somewhere. Okay, I guess I'm laying down on the job. I gotta get up in there and um, try to find this air handler. I can't see the other one down there either. All I'm seeing are some plumbing lines. Well, there she is. I, uh, I guess all I had to do was follow this kinked line set. And there it is. <clears throat> All right, is that a drain? Seems like the drain would come out down here. <clears throat> I feel like I need to cut this thing wide open so I can get to it. See if there's anything I can take apart to see why it's making that noise. I haven't seen one like this before. So, uh, that might be advantageous for me to do. All right, that's my air handler. I um, what do we have here? <sighs> Some kind of indicator lights. They go to the thermostat, I think. Mm -hmm. Is 
that may be some kind of fresh air thing mm -hmm. Let's try to take some of this apart and see what we can see. All right, in here we got our blower assembly. <clears throat> Both of those seem a little bit loose. The housing anyway. <clears throat> it looks like the housings are made with little clips right here. So you can take the bottom off and just take the whole thing out. <clears throat> All right, so airflow is in that direction. Remember, it was making a whining noise. <clears throat> and pressures made me think we had low airflow. I don't think it's bearings. I don't think it's anything that is um, caught in the wheels. I can hear that motor humming when I turn it. Honestly, I'm thinking new blower motor. Shouldn't be too hard. While we're at it, <clears throat> Let's take this off and look at our evaporator coil. Well, these little screws, every one of them, like this, can y'all see? Right in the head of the screw, there's some kind of goop. Like in this one, and this one, I can't hardly get my screwdriver in there to turn the thing. Lovely. So much for not getting filthy. Rolling around on my back. I hope that other one ain't the same kind of thing. <clears throat> it does look like they're relatively easy to work on once you get to them. All right. So I got the panel open on that one that is up towards this end over here. Tell you what, suction pressure on that one seems mighty high. Probably because I've had the door open. But um, both of these are on um, single pressure, low side pressure. 
in this one 89 that has got to be the one I have the panel open but you know it wasn't much better than that before was it let's uh close that back up down there I wanted to hear that motor up close and um watch these pressures all right so that's the sound we heard through the return <clears throat> it's gonna be hard to tell on these ECM motors if it's the motor or the board over here the motor does seem like it's turning it's got power it's doing its thing but it's also making a noise <clears throat> That's actually dropping. My pressure is dropping. I am my pressure is going up. Up to 125, that's well above freezing. Watch this. What's the deal? Is my motor turning backwards or something? Let's try to find out. Mm. I think I'm right. The motor's turning backwards. Mm -mm. No, it's turning the right direction. No, it's turning the right direction, so airflow is this way. It's 
it's just making a little noise. So why, when I close it up, why do I have that? Changing my pressures. Uh, to me that just seemed really odd like you would think I'm getting more airflow across the coil or am I wrong I guess that goes to my filter. It's a tiny little hole. Could be a lot bigger. All right, the whole time I was down there, both of the filters were removed. You can see my my pressure on that circuit right now. any further back there let me see if I can do like a video and see if there's any kind of obstruction or something video film Nope, that's not what I want to do. Video. I can see the little return and hole. There, it looks like there's a canister or some kind of smell good stuff in there. Let's watch this real quick. That's upside down. Can y'all see that? Here, I'll play it again. So y'all can see it. I don't see a restriction. Hmm. All right, so why would I get a better suction pressure when the panel's off? <clears throat> I'm 
Maybe, maybe because the ECM motor ramps up a little bit. That's all I can think. <clears throat> Look at this one. It goes right into the air handler. Much better airflow access. That's just going to have to be there until I can replace it. All right, on that last one, I'm just going to replace um, motor and control board and the filters and hope that does the trick. Let's see what's wrong with this one. Power on, set to cool, temperature set on 62. Got another strange noise. sand underneath that other trailer. Set our mode to cool. Let's see what happens. Yeah, those all look like some kind of bees that got in here. Honeybees. Right out here, I think we have an identical system. And nothing seems to be working. <laughs> Let's go get our tool. All that insulation and sand is all over me. that felt like I was just rubbing it in <laughs> looks like most of the screws are out of this <clears throat> do I have a bird's nest in there sure what all that is I gotta get something cold right, these screws to take this off are clearly where I can't get them get to them so right now I'm just gonna check to see if it has any pressure on it.
looks awfully dark and dusty around that. Y'all forgive me, it is sweltering right now. <clears throat> By that I mean it's not terribly hot, but it's very humid. <clears throat> Alright, we got 94 PSI. Should be enough to make it turn on, I think. Let's check the other one. Come on. Alright, it looks like we have 97 on one and zero on the other. I mean, how is that even possible? Don't both circuits share the same refrigerant? Showing 7.1. They're both showing zero. What in the world? I think that's my problem. I don't have any refrigerant. All right, because we don't have any Freon, and it looks like I do have access, I can pump this whole system down. It does look like I can valve this off. Maybe pressurize right here. Valve each of these off. And pressurize them individually. And then come back and see which ones are low. I think that's what I'll do. Alright, let's see. What kind of pressures we can get to. Probably the higher the better. That way it'll, um, it'll be more sensitive. go to about 200 
okay. That side is valved off. I didn't valve myself off from. So is that my pump down valve? And these are... This and this should still be open. Let's check it. Double guessing myself. Come on. All right, all my pressures somewhat equal. being able to tell what circuits what over here may not help me under there Looks like my high side is dropping. Y'all see that? High side is steady dropping. Low side is. So I got a leak on somewhere between here. I knew which circuit was which under the house. All right, that has gone down to almost 100 psi, and that's on this side right here, which is circuit B. And I don't think anything's marked underneath. I'm gonna take this down there and see if I can find it. I'm gonna pump it up a little higher. I'm thinking it's either gonna be a flare joint or where something has rubbed. Mikey mites. Let's take another trip down under. Let's see what we find. I'm at 333 PSI on that. And the first place I see to look is actually right, right here. See how these lines right here. I don't see where it's gotten to the copper, but that, and that's a rounded edge right there. 
so maybe it's okay. I'm pretty sure it's the one with the uninsulated line right here. So we're gonna follow it. That's the one all the way down at the other end. Mm. That's it. Turn that off real quick. That's a noise I hadn't heard on this before. Almost like a whistling with notes going up and down. That's the first time I've heard a leak on this leak detector. But it sure went right to it. I could hear it from over here. I could actually hear it from back here. And then I could get right up to it. And it was louder.
All right, I want y'all to hear what I'm hearing. I'll try that again. All right, let's use the ultrasonic real quick. See if we can pinpoint which one it is. Ooh. All right, it's kind of quiet down here. This thing is already at an eight on the scale. Watch this. Y'all listen carefully. up here you know what but it probably wouldn't hurt just redo both of them <sighs> at least we know what we need to do All right, so every single one of my flare joints is leaking. All of them. Well, that one beside the one that was leaking so bad, I couldn't really tell. But I could hear one here, here, on the bottom, here, and like on the side, other side over here. It's just a tiny little squeaking noise above the background you have a background noise that's kind of scratchy and then you hear above that uh, like a little whistle that's a small leak but a big leak like the one that was down there you can hear it from several feet away it's just a really loud noise so this thing has finally done me some good. All right, that one circuit that goes all the way to the other side of the trailer went from 337 to 115 and still dropping. And this one during that whole period of time has actually gone up one PSI. Even though we could hear small leaks here and at the air handler. So the major problem is that one I think a more permanent fix is to basically redo the um, flare fittings all the way around. Alright, I hope that one was interesting. In fact, on what I have found on many split systems, the most common reason for failure is the flare joints. By far the most common reason. 
If I do this in three parts, we're doing flares tomorrow. Tune in for that.